Hi there, I'm Ryan Ellis and I'm doing a video project on all that I've learned by 28. Now for step eight, as part of our 10 step process of building a company from startup to its first million dollars in sales, I'm gonna talk about marketing. Marketing to me is just good storytelling. Ideally across multiple media in a trackable and financially scalable manner. Marketing is ensuring that the right people have heard the right things about your product and your organization. And while there's a lot of information about branding, at the end of the day, a brand is just the aggregated sum total of every human being's experience with your company and your products, including your customers, your employees, your shareholders, your investors, all your stakeholders. It's just the sum total of human experience with your product and your company. And so, what's the difference between marketing and sales? Well, marketing is generating an interested lead. It's turning someone from an unknown quantity into a trackable prospect. Sales is turning that trackable prospect, the lead, into a paying customer. And account management or customer service, depending on your business, their job is to turn a customer into a repeat customer. Someone will come back time and time again and be a lifetime evangelizer. Now, in today's world, marketing is all about the product. It used to be that you could create a mediocre product and then with enough ad dollars and Madison Avenue script men, you could make a product create artificial demand or make a perceived value for something that really didn't have a lot of inherent intrinsic value. Today, with word of mouth spreading so easily on social media and with the demand for quality design products so high, you simply can't succeed with a product that sucks. You just can't succeed marketing a shitty product for long. So if you're marketing a really bad product, stop. Stop everything. Stop marketing a bad product. Take those funds that you're spending on advertising and instead put them in the product development. Put them into building a great product. Then, once you have a great product, start storytelling. Start going back to marketing and reframe the story that's being told by yourselves and others. Because at the end of the day, marketing and advertising is only partially company directed. The real storytelling happens at the level of the customer, the level of the user, and how they tell your friends, their friends, about what they're using. And in today's world, word of mouth marketing is critically important. And a company and a product can truly never succeed, particularly a consumer product, unless the stories that are being told about it are coming from real people with real passion. And so just like we learned in the last section of product development that you can't create a great product without passion, you can't create a scalable marketing result for a product, scalable sales volume, unless you have a great story with user passion. And so the six keys to success with marketing are amazing word of mouth from a great product, understanding the financial lifetime revenue, the lifetime value of a customer, a tracking system that can help you calculate the cost per lead per channel, which I'll talk more about momentarily. In that tracking system, you also need to know your conversion rate per channel. And you have to be able to consistently and constantly test new channels, new creative, which is new radio ads, new banner ads, new designs, and new processes that help you convert a lead into a customer and a customer into a repeat lifetime evangelizer. And finally, you need great storytelling. Let me take another moment and talk a little bit more about understanding the lifetime value of your customer in the slides ahead. Now, to really scientifically market, you need to always be testing. And so, you need to take somewhere between 10 and 15% of your monthly advertising budget on testing new advertising channels. And in order to be able to understand how much to allocate per advertising channel or per marketing channel, you have to calculate a really important number. You have to calculate your customer acquisition cost. If you don't know your customer acquisition cost, stop advertising. Just like if you don't have a great product, stop marketing it and instead invest in product development until you have a great product. If you don't know how much it costs to acquire an additional customer through advertising dollars, stop advertising. Stop spending money on advertising until you calculate that number. Now, it's really not that hard to calculate customer acquisition cost. 
you simply take your total amount spent on advertising during a period, let's say a month, and then you take your total number of new customers acquired during that month. And if you're not tracking how many new customers you're getting per month, then your company has other problems. Set up a system that tracks how many new customers and how many new users you add per month, per day even, into your company, and make sure your accounting system can calculate how much you spend to acquire those customers on that monthly basis. If you don't know your CAC, your customer acquisition cost, stop and calculate it. Now, you not only need to know your overall customer acquisition cost, you have to know your customer acquisition cost by marketing channel. The reason that's important is that it often costs different amounts of money to acquire customers through radio versus TV versus direct mail versus online advertising. And as a scientific marketer who's combining great storytelling with financial acumen and financial discipline, you need to be able to have a great story and you need to be able to understand which channels to invest more into. And of course, mathematically, you should invest more money in the channels that are getting you the best results. And for most companies, results means pay, new paying customers or new, paying, new leads that can turn into paying customers through a sales team. So once you're able to have a system in place, whether it's through the web or through a retail store, that can enable you to track scientifically, using the scientific method, the additional incremental dollars put into a channel and the additional results that come out of that channel, you can use basic simple optimization formulas to determine how much to spend on each channel. Now, this really only works if you have a significant enough budget to be able to calculate statistically significant data. If you're spending, say, $500 on advertising, and getting one or two customers from that spend, then you're not really sure if that's happenstance and a new customer costs $500, or maybe a new customer might cost $2,500. And so you have to have enough budget. And that budget should probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 times what it costs to acquire one new customer in order to start getting data that's good enough to be able to use and make decisions off of. So if you think it costs you on average $100 in advertising to get a new paying customer, then you probably need to be spending about $20,000 to $30,000. Excuse me, you probably need to be spending do over. Mm -hmm. cool. And so if it costs you approximately $100 to acquire a new customer, you need to be spending at least two to $3,000 to be able to test that advertising channel and get 20 or 30 customers to be able to know that your data is good. The next really important measure to determine is customer lifetime value. Customer lifetime value can be used in conjunction with customer lifetime, customer acquisition cost to optimize your advertising and marketing spend. All that customer lifetime value means is the amount of revenue over the life of that customer that you receive. And if a customer is part of a subscription product or recurring, generating recurring revenue, you simply take the amount money as money is paid per month or per period and you multiply it by the number of months or periods that that customer is around before that average customer cancels their account or stops the subscription. If it's a one-time purchase product, then you take a period of time, say four or five years, and you look back at your data of which customers are purchasing what, which you should definitely be tracking in your purchase system or CRM system, and calculate how much an average customer spends per visit to your store or per visit to your website, and then secondarily, how frequently they purchase. So let's take two examples. So in the case of recurring revenue, if a customer is paying $50 a month and stays around for 48 months, then the average lifetime revenue per customer is going to be $2,400. Now, as a very quick rule of thumb, and this is very different depending on the company, but I found that you can generally afford, depending on your costs of production, about one-third of the total revenue over the lifetime of a customer up front at maximum to acquire a new customer. Now, ideally, you want it to be as low as possible while still maximizing the number of new customers you get. And so if your lifetime revenue is $2,400, you might be able to spend, say, $800 in advertising to get that customer and still break even and still be profitable. Now, here's a rough example if it's a non-recurring one-time customer. Let's say that the average purchase price is $50, and within, say, a period of three years, you could do four years or five years as well that the average customer comes back six times. That means they will spend $300 with you. And so you might be able to spend $100, again, depending on your gross margin and net profit margin and your cost of goods sold, to acquire that new customer. Certainly higher in, say, software businesses where gross margins are often higher. 
Now, once you have the data on customer acquisition cost by channel and customer lifetime value, which you should also ideally calculate by channel by determining which customers come from which channels, marking them as coming from that advertising channel, and then over time tracking their, their unit economics, how much their, their lifetime value, you can optimize your marketing and scale your ad budget scientifically. And so once you know your conversion rate, your acquisition cost, and your lifetime value, you can scale your marketing. As an example, in my experience at iContact, we found that a channel, say like radio, was much more expensive than other channels. And so that told us that we should reduce our spend on, on say, radio and increase our spend on the channels that were lower cost. Now here are some examples of online marketing channels. Search engine optimization like Google and Yahoo and Bing, basically how you build content on your website and get other websites to link to you in order to show up in the organic search listings. You can also try cost per click or pay per click, like with Google AdWords and with Bing Ad Center, where you pay per click for visitors to come to your website. You could build up your presence on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. You could purchase ads on those same services. You could purchase banner ads. You could create a network of affiliates who are incented to sell your product for a commission on each sale through tools like Commission Junction and Linkshare. You could get reviewed on review sites like Yelp and City Search and Google Local. And you can do daily deals with services like Groupon and Living Social, although oftentimes that will reduce your profits. And third, uh, excuse me, uh, and finally, you can do email follow-up with tools like Constant Contact, iContact, and MailChimp. Now, let me talk about offline marketing channels. Now, oftentimes it's a lot easier to track online marketing results than it is offline marketing results. The general way that you will track offline marketing results is by spending enough of a budget in a particular region, a particular demographic area, that you can determine the previous, the results prior to spending any money and the results after spending the money. And so if you're taking the Chicago area, the Chicago region, and before you were adding 100 customers a month from the Chicago region, and then you spend $100,000 and now you're acquiring 200 customers a month, you, that $100,000 has enabled you to acquire about 100 new customers from that spend. And so, depending on the frequency with your spending, you might say that it's about $1,000 per new customer, and that's your customer acquisition cost from that channel of advertising. And then you can take, you can figure out what it would cost and what the results approximately would be if you scaled that campaign nationally or internationally. Now, some of the channels are sort of obvious. They've been around for decades, like television, print, radio, yellow pages, direct mail, trade shows, sponsoring events, putting up billboards, using campus reps for word of mouth. So the key is to test all of the channels and track the actual results from each one. So bringing everything together in order to grow your advertising and tell a better story and scientifically scale your marketing, here are some important steps. You want to calculate your cost per lead, your CPL, and your conversion rate by channel. And when you combine your cost per lead and your conversion rate, you'll know your customer acquisition cost by channel. You want to determine what you can pay per new customer. You want to test new advertising channels using scientific methods and combine that with great storytelling. You want to create a premium version of your product so you can upsell. You want to test doubling your price and see what happens and really test the price elasticity of your product. You can also get more affiliates and distributors, open up more sales offices, add more retail locations, and create additional products. You can also hire more salespeople or just hire someone to call your existing customers and offer to sell them other products that help serve their needs. You can always raise capital once you know your unit economics of your marketing to expand your advertising scientifically. So here are just some basic tips to grow your sales. Thanks for watching this section on executing your marketing plan.